Hey everybody, Ann here, and today I'm going to make some sauerkraut, and this is how I do it. First, gather your supplies. I'm just using one average size head of cabbage. I'm going to add some uh, carrots to it, and I've got some salt, and of course, some nice clean water. Next, I remove the heavy outer leaves, but don't throw them away. We're going to save them for later. First thing, I'm going to cut that big piece off down there. Then I'm going to probably quarter this piece here. I'm going to cut it in half first, remove the core, then quarter it. I remove the core just by cutting a V around it, like I'm done here, and then I just pop it out. And then I just cut them into quarters because they're easier to handle. Now, if you had a mandolin slicer, and I do not, but if you had one, that would be perfect. Just run it through that mandolin slicer. But I don't have one, so I'm just going to chop it up very, very thin. See that? That's about as thin as I get it. And then I just kind of separate it and put it into, well, I don't have a big bowl. Um, I'm just going to put it into this pot over here. Fill that up. And I'm just going to add this last little part in there. And I'm glad that this pot is going to fit it. I actually wish I had a bigger bowl, but I'll have to get one eventually. I can see already that this is going to be more difficult to do because I don't have one big bowl. So I'm going to kind of process half of it and then after that wilts a little bit, after I put the salt on it, I'll add a little bit more. So let me get my salt. The rule of thumb is I think three tablespoons per five pounds of cabbage. I've only got uh, about one and a half, two pounds, so I may end up using one and a half tablespoons um, or maybe even two. So I'm going to start by just sprinkling this with about half of it and then I'm just going to massage this in. I'm just going to toss it around and just keep squeezing it. You just keep squeezing it and this takes a while but eventually this is going to start wilting and then I'll be able to add the rest. You could really do this all at once but I don't have a big enough pot like I said so let me just get this first half going. All right, I've only been doing this for a couple of minutes and you can see it's already reduced in volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle the rest of this on. And I'm gonna add a little bit more and just keep massaging it until I've got it all massaged. And I am gonna taste this. I'm gonna use more than one tablespoon. I maybe use one and a half or two tablespoons. Uh, we'll just have to see what it tastes like. Um, and so I'm just going to keep working on this until it kind of reduces down a little bit more so I can have some more room to add some more. And this is easier to do with two hands. I usually do it with two hands, but I'm filming. Uh, this is massaging down really nicely. I've added more of this. I've just got this much more to, to add to it. So I'm going to add the rest of this. And then I am going to add, and I've tasted it as well. I'm going to add another half a tablespoon of salt. You don't want too much salt. You don't want too little. Um, if you get too much salt then it won't ferment the right way and if you don't add enough then you might develop bad mold and whatnot. Um, so we're just going to add about another half a tablespoon and that's going to be all the salt that I need. So let me just get this massage down and we'll go to the next part. That is looking really really good. It has really massaged down well. And this next part, you certainly don't have to do it. I do it just because I like to have a little bit of carrot in my sauerkraut. I'm just going to toss some of that in. Hopefully it won't go all over the place. And then just massage that in with the rest of the cabbage. I've used just a little bit less than a half a bag just to get a little bit of extra color in there, a little extra flavor. I want it to be mostly cabbagey. And it's really squeezing down really nicely. Alrighty, so I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. And I am going to go boil some water. Ha, I forgot that the pot that I used to boil water, I had the sauerkraut in. So we're just going to leave it here for a little bit. Um, and just let that salt work a little bit more. You can't see it and I'm afraid to tip it over. But um, there is a bunch of brine down in the bottom of this plate. So it's already starting to work. I'm just going to cover this up a little bit with some, you know, like plastic or something, 
bring the water to the boil and then I'm going to cool the water down before I start packing the jar. And you know what, you don't have to boil the water, honestly. Um, I just do it because um, I got it from, you know, a spring well, and I just want to make sure there's no back, bad bacteria in it. Uh, so I'm boiling it, and then I'm going to let it cool down, and then we'll start packing the jar. The water's boiling, and I am just going to turn this off and let it cool. And while we're waiting for the water to cool off so we can start packing that sauerkraut into the jar, me and Patty are just enjoying the sunshine. The sun came out and it's so wonderful. And she just loves laying on this fake lawn, just lounging in the sun. And my solar is charging up. Yay! While that's cooling down, let's pack this into this big old jar. You recognize that? Yup, I had these pickled eggs in it. Don't worry, I've got another jar to make a another batch of them. Uh, this jar's been cleaned and sanitized and so now I'm just going to start grabbing this with clean hands and shoving it down into the jar. Alright, it's coming along just fine. Just keep packing it down really well so you can get it all fit in there. Would you look at that? I am actually kind of excited to know that I can process two heads of cabbage in this one big huge jar. So that's pretty awesome. And yup, this brine right here, it's all going in to the jar. But I'm going to put the phone down for that. I wish I had enough cabbage to fill it all the way up. But can you see down there all that beautiful brine that's forming? Um, this is a two quart jar, so basically one medium sized head of cabbage uh, per quart, I guess. Um, and then, of course, I add the carrots as well. And sometimes I even add onions. You can add all different kinds of vegetables, but this is what we're going to do today. So let's go see if that water has cooled down enough. The water has cooled enough, so I'm just going to pour in enough. Let me see what that looks like. Yep, that's plenty. That's more than enough, actually. Um, if this were full, I'd fill it to, like, right about here. And the next thing we're going to do is just put something down in it to keep the sauerkraut beneath the brine. Remember those nice big leaves that we saved from the outside? I'm going to use that one. I'm going to pick one out. I don't think we need one that big. And we're just going to shove it down in there to keep the sauerkraut beneath the brine. I'm just going to get this in here, kind of press it down really well. I may add a little bit more brine on top of it too, just to make sure that it stays down. Oh, I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, I think that's good. It's covering the top leaf and the leaf is holding it down. Now this is not what a normal jar of sauerkraut would look like. You would have it filled kind of like up to here, but since I'm only doing a half, you know, a half thingy of it, this is how I'm doing it. So I hope it turns out. Um, next time I'll make sure to get more cabbage. So I'm just going to put the lid on. It's also been sanitized. Uh, and I'm going to put it on kind of loose because when this starts fermenting, it might bubble up some and it might come out of the jar. And you want the um, carbon dioxide to be able to escape. Some people will put like a cloth over it and just tie that over. Uh, that's, as, that's fine too. And there's also little um, things you can put in the cap that are uh, little airlocks. But this is all I do. I just put it on kind of loose. I'm going to go put it out in the shed and just see how long it takes for this to ferment. I'll check it every day to make sure that, you know, the it's still down below the level of the fluid. And in a few days, I'm going to taste it. Sometimes it ferments kind of quick. Um, after a few days, sometimes it takes a couple weeks. So we'll just kind of check on it every day and see how it goes. I just wanted to add that my head of cabbage weighed just over two pounds and then I also added the carrots. So an average size, medium size head of cabbage will be enough to fill a one quart jar. 
and I used a two quart jar so I could have doubled that and so the one and a half tablespoons of salt was perfect for this batch and uh, also if you're going to fill it all the way up to the top, you're going to want to stick a knife down in the sides to kind of release some of the air bubbles if you're going to fill it up all the way. Um, that way you can pack the cabbage down even more and so that it won't be likely to float up when it starts bubbling up. And so yeah, I just wanted to add that so you were all clear on the process. So this is just how I do it. It's not going to be the perfect crock of sauerkraut, but that's okay. I think it'll still turn out okay. But if you do it differently or if you want to share your own recipe or your own process of doing it, please feel free to leave a comment down below so that we can all learn from each other. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.